Hi there, this is Talia the Dietitian and today I'm doing something a little different. Um, I've had some requests to talk about my own weight journey and journey in my body and I wanted to tie that into another question I've gotten recently as well which is why I became a dietitian. Um, so I wanted to kind of join those two together. So know that throughout this video I'm not going to be giving you specific numbers about weight. I don't want this to be a weight focused conversation, but I do want it to be a body focused conversation. And I want to tie it back into all the things that we can do as parents to help our child avoid having the issues with, with their bodies that so many of us have struggled with. Um, I've talked about this quite a lot recently in my Instagram stories, and it seems like majority of parents and most of the people that follow me are women have really struggled with their body or self-esteem or body weight in some way mentally in some way or another and that's really common and so I want to give you my perspective of, of what my journey has been like and again tie that back into what we can do to make a difference for our children which is what's most important to me so I have some notes here because I have a child baby brain still so in my early, early teen years, I was short and I had a very round face with a double chin and I've always had legs and an ass, <laughs> always had chubby legs. And um, that's something that, you know, right at the start of like middle school, like year seven type thing, um, which is when everybody starts getting very aware of that. And I was never, quote, fat but it was something that I struggled with having a double chin and it was something that I would talk to my mum about and I'm so very fortunate that my mum was quite ahead of the time that she never spoke badly about her own body and always just listened to me when I was saying these things and she would always say that everybody's body is different and you know as you grow your body is going to change which is all true it wasn't about it don't worry you won't have a double chin forever it was you know, this is who you look like right now. And this is you and you're perfect the way you are because this is who your body is. This is what your body is. Um, and something that, you know, I'm acutely aware of having two daughters is I want them to be positive with their bodies and love themselves no matter what they look like and focusing less on how they look and more on what their body does for them. And if that ever kind of comes up with, oh, my hair looks beautiful, um, or whatever the case may be that my daughter has commented, I'll always try and take that back to what our bodies do for us um, and, and why we have to love our bodies and respect them. So, you know, yeah, that was kind of my teen, early teen years. And then as I like really hit puberty, um, I grew taller and I did slim out. Although, like I said earlier, I always had thighs and a butt, <laughs> always. Um, so, and this is my genetics. Everybody's genetics is different. In fact, um, a huge part of what your body looks like is made up from genetics, where you store fat, how you store fat, all these types of things. And I have my mom's body type from the late, from the hips down. That's where I store my fat from the hips up. Not so much. So in these videos, all you see are from the hips up. So, you know, I've never really had much in the way of cleavage. And that was something that was very disturbing to me as a teenager that I just kind of never really got boobs but you know you learn you have to learn that that that's how your body is and you can't really you can't change it because you can't change your genetics and being positive in what you do have and what your body does for you even though in those teen years it's really difficult so um then i i you know graduated high school i i went to university i studied abroad and moved in with my husband i was quite young and um it was after I started living with my husband, who back then was just my boyfriend, um, that I, I started to gain weight, which is common um, at this time because you're no longer growing, but you're kind of stuck in that mentality of, you know, you were growing very rapidly. And as a teenager, you ate a lot because you were hungry all the time because you were growing. And there can sometimes be a disconnect there that it just kind of becomes a habit. I eat this much and that's how much I eat. And if you're used to putting a huge bowl of pasta um, for yourself for dinner, even though you've stopped growing, you kind of just still used to that and becomes a habit. So really tuning into those cues of, am I hungry? Am I still hungry? Do I need seconds? And I've got another video about intuitive eating and I'll link that at the end um, and I'll put it in the description. But um, 
really what you can do to tune into your your body and what it's feeling can really help you out. Part of the reason I gained this weight was that, the disconnect between how much my body actually needed in terms of food, but also because I was out of the house, out of my parents' house. My parents didn't eat particularly uh, diverse foods as kids. So when I moved out and I moved to another country, I grew up in Australia and I moved here to be with my now husband and study abroad here, um, there were a lot of new foods that I wanted to try. And we traveled quite a bit. We traveled, you know, to China. We traveled to quite a few different places. And there's all new foods to eat. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to try all these new things. And I didn't, it wasn't even on my radar that I was gaining weight at this point. In fact, it wasn't on my radar until I couldn't button my pants, <laughs> which was a couple of years later. And at that point, I wasn't really all that bothered by it. I was loving life. I was loving everything. I was exercising. I was really happy. It didn't really bother me at all. Um, and I got married in my larger body and never, ever, I never had gone on a diet. I was never like, I need to shred for the wedding type thing. Like never on my radar at all. I was just in a bigger body at the time. And it wasn't of any concern to me because my I was happy with my life. I was happy eating the adventurous foods that I was eating and enjoying things, walking. Um, if you've followed me on Instagram, you might know that I do pole dancing for fun and fitness. Um, and I do aerial acrobatics pre-children, not so much now, still the pole, but not the aerial stuff. So I was doing all those things and I was just loving everything. So I graduated from my undergrad degree. I started my master's degree in nutrition and clinical dietetics because I absolutely, I took a nutrition class um, when I was studying abroad and I loved it. I wanted so much to do that for the rest of my life. How do I do this for the rest of my life? And so I looked up degrees that I could do and nutrition and dietetics seemed to be the answer. So I spent the rest of my undergrad degree completing all the prerequisites that I needed. Um, and I applied to this quite prestigious program um, at one university we can talk about that another time as to why that was. And I told my husband, look, we had gone back to Australia at this point. And I told him, I said, look, if we, if we, if I don't get into this program, I will move back to the U S with you. And I got into this program. They only accepted, um, uh, it was 45 dietitians or 45 students at the time. And I got in and I didn't, we had had a lot of discussions about whether or not we should do this. And I ended up doing it and it was the best decision of my life, even though at the time it was very, very difficult. So anyway, I started this program. In my second semester, I started my clinical rotation in a hospital and it was a big hospital in downtown Melbourne. And so I, I had to get up early. I walked to the train, I took the train in. Um, there was walking involved. The, the um, hospital had 10 flights of stairs in it. And if ever I saw a patient that was um, on the fifth floor or below, I would always take the stairs because waiting for the lift took forever. So um, I was doing a lot of extra physical activity with that. And with that, I was also, my husband and I were very poor at the time. Um, so I was making my own lunches and all my snacks, I was taking them with me. Um, I never bought food at the hospital or anywhere else because we just couldn't afford it. So um, I was kind of unbeknownst to me at the time, portion controlling, which is not, again, what I was thinking at the time. It was like, I need a sandwich. I need this. I'm still really hungry. I pack fruit. Like I was still like taking breaks and eating because I was always very hungry. So during this time, um, it was probably, I don't know, six or eight weeks into the rotation. And I, I got on the scale and I realized that I had started to lose weight and it was completely not on my radar that that's what I was trying to do. And I just continued to do the same thing because I continued to go to the hospital. <laughs> I continued to have to do the things that I was doing, make my own lunch and all this kind of thing. And um, I ended up getting back down to my most comfortable weight, which was what I was, you know, in my very early adult life. And I've been able to maintain that just, it, again, it's not something that I'm consciously trying to do. I'm never consciously trying to lose weight. Um, I, I'm more, and I don't, I try not to weigh myself very often. I will get to an exception in a minute. Um, but it was more of just tuning into my own body. Am I hungry? Am I full? Do I want to eat? Do I not want to eat? Why, why not? And, and then eating the foods that I like to eat. Um, 
I like to go out to eat. We like to travel. Before we had kids, we traveled every year to a new location and we would pretty much pick the location based on the type of food we wanted to eat and, and try and the culture we wanted to be immersed in. So food has always been very central to me and to my husband. When I moved back to the United States after I finished my master's degree, I couldn't find a job. It was during the uh, Great Recession, the, the global financial crisis. I couldn't find a job um, for multiple reasons. Um, and I, got, I became quite depressed. I didn't have any friends. It, it was really a sucky time in my life. I started um, getting really heavily into aerial acrobatics and I was exercising a lot because I didn't have anything else to do. And it wasn't like a compulsive exercising. It was, I went to this place to train with people that I liked and I was friends with and I had so much fun. And that's what I did four or five days a week. I didn't necessarily, again, my weight didn't change, but I definitely became a lot more lean and muscular, which again, was not the goal. The goal was just to have social contact with other human beings that I enjoyed and getting out of the house. So I don't know how relatable that can be, but I know that I'm sure there's been a time in your life where you've felt sad. I felt very incomplete not having a job. Um, and I was living with, we were married at the time, my husband, and I just was quite depressed at the time. And then if you fast forward, I did get a job. I, I teach at a community college um, and higher education that I like very much. Um, things got a lot better. I had my first baby. I ended up having postpartum depression and anxiety, but it was never diagnosed. I didn't know that that's what I had until I had my second baby when I did get diagnosed um, because things were just so bad. Um, and what I really struggled with after having my second baby was keeping weight on. I would, I would, I got on the scale a couple of months after she was born and I was below my most comfortable weight and I had never been at such a low weight before. And that, that actually caused me so much stress and anxiety because it was a manifestation of how I could not take care of myself and how I wasn't taking care of myself and respecting my body. So it was actually very, very stressful. And as a lot of mothers, I've shared this story, you know, a little bit on, on Instagram and a lot of parents, a lot of mums have, have said to me that they've experienced the same thing. And every time I went out, people would compliment me on how great I looked. And all I could think was, but I feel like crap. Like it was not a good time in my life. Um, and if you've had postpartum depression and anxiety, and even if you haven't, you know how hard having children, having a newborn is, um, and getting complimented on how your body looks is like the least helpful thing ever. Um, so I really struggled with that. And again, it was like being complimented on how I wasn't taking care of my body. And that made me very, very stressed out. So that was a time in my life that I was weighing myself once a week to make sure that I was not losing any more weight. Um, and I was just trying to maintain it and gain at the time, um, eating regular meals, eating with the kids. Um, my husband would come home and make sure that I had eaten. And if I hadn't eaten enough, he'd be like, what can I make you? Um, and all these kinds of things. So what I really hope to get across here is one, I, I, I think, you know, it's nice that you can get to know me a little bit better, but there are a lot of things that in our own mind, we are sending these messages to our children. Um, if they see us dieting, if they see us stressed out about our weight. And I'm sure that um, uh, with my depression, with my second baby, my uh, older one was probably two and a half, close to three. Um, I'm sure she picked up on a lot of the stress and angst that I was having around food as well, which I'm not proud of at all. I can't go back and change it. All I can do is move forward and use my positive power as a parent to ensure that moving forward I can I do everything in my power to give her a positive relationship with food and I sit and I eat and enjoy the food together with them and it was actually after having my second baby I was in the midst of my postpartum depression I had had it diagnosed is when I decided to start family snack nutritionist and it ended up being such a wonderful blessing I feel like I've been able to connect with so many other mothers and, and make a difference in other people's lives when it comes to feeding their children um, and those are the reasons that I created the two courses that I have, Stress-Free Sweets and Eats, which is specifically related to sweets and junk food um, to help parents 
ensure that they are building a positive relationship with food and building trust for their child so that so that we do not have to pass on these struggles that we have had with our bodies and food and the way we view food as bad food or good food or clean food and all this other stuff that is external to us but it's been labeled in this way and it has come on to us that it is bad and we are bad and we should feel guilt and shame for eating it and I want to help every parent avoid that for their children because no child deserves that at all. And the other course that I have is Mealtimes Without Meltdowns, which is new, and that is to help parents if you've got, if you feel anxious at mealtimes with feeding your children or there are mealtime battles and struggles or you have a picky eater, what can you do about it? How do you handle tantrums around food? How do you do respond to tantrums around food? You know, if you feel like you're second guessing yourself, again, as a mother who has experienced postpartum depression and anxiety, I have second guessed myself for the last four years of my life daily and I know any parent watching this can it can understand that as well and I my area of expertise as a dietitian is food and this is an area that I want to share my expertise to help you not second guess yourself not feel stressed and anxious and frustrated at mealtimes so that is my story and I hope you know, I'd love to know what what resonated with you, what is similar, what you connected with. Drop me a comment below. I'd really love to, to, to read some of your stories as well. And if you have any other questions about what I talked about, drop those below as well. So I really hope that resonated with you and um, that it was relatable. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe to my channel and, and like it. And um, I will link those courses in the description for you. And um, Thank you so much for watching. This is Talia, the dietitian. Bye-bye. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Here are a couple more and I will have a new video coming every week, so please subscribe.